You're watching Federal Forum 2021, presented by ServiceNow. The federal government has laid out a federal data strategy prioritizing data as a way to answer key questions for agencies and their stakeholders. My next guests tell you how organizations can leverage data better in 2021. Kirsten Dalbo is Chief Data Officer at the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Bob Osborne's Chief Technology Officer for Global Governments at ServiceNow. Welcome to both of you. Kirsten, I start with you. How are you leveraging data at FERC today? Well, uh, thanks so much for having me. Um, we're using data for a lot of really exciting things. Um, I mean, obviously I'm a Chief Data Officer, so um, data I'm biased here in that data is arguably our most important asset across the government. Um, it facilitates all manner of missions across government, um, public policy, scientific research, public safety, oversight and regulatory activity. Um, and at FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, we are obviously a regulatory body. Um, our mission is economically efficient, safe, reliable, and secure energy for consumers. And data really underpins all of that. Um, so we have our administrative and our operational data, that tracking data to manage our day-to-day -day work activities, the HR data, the financial, the contracts data. Um, all of this ensures that our agency can run efficiently. And then of course there's the mission data and that is the really big space where you know, we collect a lot of data from the regulated entities through our information collections. We have market data, we have performance metrics of the operators, the subscription data, um, and we use all of that to monitor the markets. We're detecting fraudulent behavior. We're anticipating reliability issues on the grid. We're inspecting energy infrastructure. Uh, we're doing economic and geographic impact analyses of our regulations. Um, and this is all really exciting work with data. Um, and this really shows how data is so important, why it's a strategic asset. Um, and really, you know, I've been in the data space since 2012, I guess, officially. And it's amazing the progress that technology has made over the years, particularly in cloud, to really, really allow us to launch and, and do so much more with data than we ever really could have imagined. I mean, um, I've been at, this is my third agency now, um, and the progress we've made from these sort of really, really heavy, laborious, cost-intensive um, on-prem data center infrastructures to now moving into the cloud and having this, this elasticity and scalability um, it really is phenomenal, and I'm so excited about this progress. Uh, Kirsten, thank you for that. Bob, welcome. You and I have talked about the benefits that Kirsten just laid out from cloud transitions a, a dozen times if we've done it once. What are organizations gaining beside that from doing the kinds of, of technology transitions that Kirsten just laid out? Well, Francis, it's great to be back with you again and talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is data. Of course, as we've talked about many times before, it all comes down to the data. And just like we've heard from Kirsten and what they're doing in FERC, the problem has never been the lack of data. We have data that abounds in each of our agencies. The challenge is, what do you do with it? How can you make sense of what the data is telling you? And it's really kind of like a treasure hunt. If you can normalize and aggregate that data and gain insights from what the data is telling us, we can not only prepare to deliver services across our government agencies better, but now we can start to apply new and emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, supervised machine learning to be able to not only gain insights from previous occurrences and the data that we've gathered from events and operations in the past, but utilize artificial intelligence to look across the, the workflows that the data represent and get predictive and analytic data at the same time. So like Kirsten said, it's really an exciting time to be in the government. Technology is going in tremendous speed towards utilizing data to uh, increase the efficiency and effectiveness of our government agencies. Kirsten, I want to draw on your expertise, not just from FERC, but from your other assignments. How does an organization get from uh, a position where they're not able to do some of the things that you're talking about to where you are today? What's that, what's that evolution? What's that iterative process look like? And what are some of the important mileposts in that journey? 
I mean, I guess I would want to talk about really the importance of good data governance and good data management. I mean, we're never going to get to those um, artificial intelligence um, opportunities and machine learning opportunities if you don't have good governance, you don't have good data management practices in place. And that means having a good data catalog, having a well understood data catalog data. Um, you know what your authoritative trusted data is, you know whether that data is fit for purpose, you know what the allowable use is for that data, it fits within the ethical framework for the use of that data. Um, you know, then the, the governance practices, making sure that we have understanding and com common agreement as to those core data elements, the data assets, the data sets. Um, and then really there's just, the, there's a really important aspect, the customer engagement aspect of all of this and making sure that you're constantly coordinating with your partners within your agency and across agencies um, to make sure that we all have that common understanding. We're, we're all mapping tracking that roadmap together, we're all in agreement. We also can can build in like that the agile methodologies as well. Um, so we can anticipate changes in priorities because those always happen. Um, and so the but that foundation of good governance and good data management practices is really what under, underpins all of this and, and paves the way for us to get to that um, get to those optimal AI use cases and, and machine learning and all of that kind of stuff. Kirsten, are the principles the same of, of good data governance and good data management from organization to organization? Are the decision points about what are, you, know, you talked about some of the, the different uh, decision matrices of, that you have to decide. Um, are those decision points the same from agency to agency, organization to organization? I would say largely yes. Um, now, of course, different agencies are, are structured differently. I mean, I spent a lot of time at Homeland Security, which is a very large agency. So there's a lot of, of decentralized components. And so just the coordination aspects are a little bit different, but the decision points are, are largely the same. I mean, I also spent time at Health and Human Services, Office of Inspector General. Um, again, a lot of really compelling use cases, but as an oversight body, they approach it slightly differently, but you still have those same common decisions that you need to make in, um, to make sure that you know what your authoritative trusted data is and, and that you have that common understanding. Um, and now at FERC, being a, a regulatory commission, um, again, slightly different approach to data and, and the type of use cases that we're looking at, but still very common questions that we need to make sure that we're, we're consistently able to answer um, and getting those decision points. I'm going to pull a number out of the sky, and Kirsten, apologies if I characterize it wrong, you can correct me in a moment, but Bob, let's say 70% of all of those governance and management principles are the same from organization to organization, and 30% are different at one of the places that Kirsten worked as opposed to the, uh, another place. How does one go about formulating the right things for that organization in that whatever the percentage is, 30% in my model, um, for making sure, since those are as important as she laid them out to be, um, to make sure you get them right? Well, Francis, I think that uh, both you and Kirsten have really focused on and, and made a point of uh, a key element, and that is the curation of the data. The, the ability to have normalized data is really critical as you start to do analytics in any form. But as Kirsten also pointed out, the ability to achieve artificial intelligence and utilize supervised machine learning really relies on ensuring that you understand where your trusted data sources are. When you do that, because as we know, all data is not created equal. Some has a higher importance or relevance to a particular outcome or process that you're trying to achieve or, or work with than other data does. So if you can identify the trusted, assured, uh, authoritative data source, and you can normalize the data from the multitude of different data models that are used across a complex computing uh, enterprise, which is most of our federal agencies, then you could start to apply the technologies that assist in providing that data in context to the human who's trying to draw a conclusion, make a decision, or take an action. And that's really the outcome that we're looking for, is being able to increase our human ability to make decisions faster, with fewer errors and deliver that mission successfully. Bob, one of the first conversations you and I had many years ago, you're still in government, we talked about using data for security, particularly cybersecurity. How has that concept evolved over the years? Well, I think that that's a great point and it touches the other favorite subject I enjoy talking with you about, Francis, and that's cybersecurity. Of course, the data sets involved in cybersecurity are very sim similar to every other data set that government agencies wrestle with. There's no lack of data. It's 
finding the nugget within the seas of data that we're creating in our government agencies to actually be able to, to draw a conclusion that either uh, hopefully averts an event of some sort of a cybersecurity um, intrusion or creates an environment that makes it increasingly difficult for adversaries to penetrate. And that comes with visibility and control across a computing exercise, which is all based upon understanding what's happening within that computing environment. And the data associated with that is critical in helping us to draw those conclusions. Kirsten, uh, I imagine that cybersecurity data falls under the uh, bucket that you talked about earlier of administrative and operational data. To that point that Bob just made about finding that nugget within seas of data, whether it's cyber uh, data or something else, how, how do you perceive your role, how do you see your role at being the facilitator for other people in FERC to find that nugget of data that's useful to them among the sea of data that, that, you're ta that you've talked about? You know, I really love that question because as a chief data officer, I'm I'm never going to be the expert in all data. Um, and then sometimes I get asked that question if I really am the expert in all data and, and I won't be. So um, I'm a really big believer and I think everyone who's ever heard me speak knows that I will talk a lot about the importance of data stewardship um, because this, this is really about the accountability and ownership and responsibility for data. Um, every data asset, every data set, every data element across an organization has an identified steward and that is the person who is the subject matter expert on the data. Um, and those are very, those people are our important, really important partners um, to me and my team because my job is to ensure consistency in the strategy, consistency in the methodology, um, broad communication across the, the community to make sure everyone knows what's happening. We all agree um, as to how the data is defined, how it's used. Um, but, but the methodology is really what my role is and, and ensuring that that open collaboration, open discussion, um, and, and consistency in how we think about our, our, our conceptual data architectures and things like that. But the data stewards are the, the people who are the experts in all that data. So, so right, a cybersecurity analyst is likely going to be a steward of that cyber data. Um, and then we have stewards of all the other data, the, the other administrative and operational and mission data. Um, those people, frankly, are also going to be partners of the cyber team because the way that all of those data assets, all of those data sets get categorized by their um, sensitivity levels is also very relevant to a cyber community to make sure that we're appropriately protecting it all the right way. Kirsten, and I think there's a misunderstanding among some folks, especially non-practitioners, maybe mission delivery folks primarily, um, that the data people in an organization are part of the IT team. And that might be the case for the organizationally. But what's the intersection between the work that you and your colleagues in the data community do and that people that uh, are in the IT organization uh, in an agency like FERC do? You work together, I'm sure, but you don't do exactly the same thing. You're not an IT person, they're not data people. Is that a fair assessment or am I reading it wrong? No, I mean, that that's, you're exactly right. I mean, um, across all of the program offices, you have data practitioners. I mean, that those are the economies, uh, the economists, the industry analysts, the statisticians. To some degree, they're, they're kind of the data scientists and they're the people who are doing that really deep thinking about the data. Um, and then within the IT space, um, and and the, the centralized data space, um, that's where you have sort of your, your central place where you're, you're creating a common platform, um, a common set of core services, uh, a standard architecture that makes this data available. Um, and then maybe within my team, there's a center of excellence for, for um, to facilitate some of that deeper data science work, but, but it's still, a lot of that still gets spread out across the program offices. Um, I tend to use a cake baking analogy a lot where, where I tend to think of the people um, across the program offices, those economists, the statisticians, the energy in, um, industry analysts as, as these cake bakers, they're chefs, they're, they're doing really interesting work with data. They're, they're thinking of new ways to combine ingredients in really compelling ways. Um, and then my team makes sure that we have consistent ing ingredients and that they're defined well and that they're safe to eat. Um, and then we have the kitchen where we work very closely with people across CIO to make sure that we have good um, appliances to, to bake cakes from. We have those good visualization tools. We have um, data science notebooks. We have Power BI dashboards. We have geospatial analytics, things like that. Um, so I could keep going on. Uh, Bob, I've never said this before. 
We're starting to run out of time, and I'm glad because now I'm really hungry for cake. I can't help myself. So thanks for that, Kirsten. In the time that we have left, though, manage up for me, Bob. Think about the mission delivery people, but think about the leadership of the organization that you're trying to explain all of this to, to make the case for why you need more resources, why you need more people, whatever. Um, the value that this is adding ultimately to the organization, all the things we've talked about today. Well, while I share your need for a slice of cake right now, I'll try to stay on task. And, and I think when we talk about the outcomes or what we're trying to achieve with, with having this rich source of data and being able to apply that data contextually to what the mission delivery is of our agencies is really the key. So as, as Kirsten said, you know, the bakers in the kitchen who are putting together all the different elements, all the different layers, all the different ingredients of data, it's to draw a conclusion that supports someone who has to have that information to make a more informed decision. So the more we can normalize data from all the different data inputs, understand that it's absolutely authoritative and can be trusted, and then use that to support better decision making, drives a better mission outcome at a lower cost for our agencies across the government at whatever level they may be serving. All right, just a couple of minutes left, folks. Kirsten, what do you anticipate kind of the state of the art being data-wise at some point in the future, two years out, five years out, what, are, what will you be able to do at that point that maybe you can't today, can't do as much of, can't do it as fast or whatever? Oh, I mean, the sky's the limit, but, but I mean, having well-defined data that is available so we, we can make that, that self-service data data available to, to all of the analysts across an organization um, and beyond, frankly. I mean, um, we, we need to be able to make sure that we can get those ingredients out for the bakers and, and the chefs who want to and need to um, find those, that, those important nuggets across the data to inform our decision-making and our path forward and, and make sure that we're putting the right policies in place and the right regulatory actions to make sure that we can provide that efficient, that safe, that reliable, secure energy for consumers or, or whatever government mission we may have. Um, so making sure that we have that self-service available, which means that we have well-defined, well-understood, authoritative and trusted data available that is accessible to the end user. Um, and they can get into that, that data store, that, that sort of storefront. They can search for the data, they can find it, they can throw it into their shopping cart, they can push it into a workspace, they can run really cool analytics. And if there's value here, then we can push it into production and make it available for, for many users to, to share that out with others and, and continue to grow on that. Um, we have about a minute left, Bob. What are the building blocks that an organization needs to fulfill the, ver the vision that Kirsten just laid out? So Kirsten paints a great vision of the future, and I tell you, the vision is exciting. And it's the continuation of the rise of the virtual assistant, which utilizes artificial intelligence to cull through the, the oceans of data that we're creating within government, pulling those nuggets in context to support human decision-making. The complexity or sausage-making, to use a different analogy of cooking, uh, or the cake-baking is gonna be abstracted away from the decision-maker. And we're going to have virtual assistants more prominent in government, helping decision makers make the correct decision at the right time. It's a super exciting time to be involved in data, in IT and government in general, and part of the future of technology. Bob Osborne, Kirsten Dalbo, thanks very much for joining me. Time for cake. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining our webinar, Federal Forum 2021, presented by ServiceNow. For more on this critically important topic, go to govmatters.tv slash ServiceNow. You'll get a link to the archive session shortly. If you're requesting a training certificate, look for an email with download instructions after the webinar. For the Government Matters Thought Leadership Network, powered by Fed Insider, I'm Francis Rose.